Welcome back to Blinken Lights. Yeah. In the previous video, we talked about the Mega AVR Zero Series Watchdog Timer and the Reset Controller that you find in the AT Mega 4809 on your Arduino Nano Every card here. Link in the description. However, in that video, I told you a blatant lie. And I simply can't live with myself anymore after that. So I'm gonna fess up to it and make things right. Enjoy! So I told you that of the six different reset types an AT Mega has, in your sketch running on your AT Mega here, you will never ever experience a power on reset. You might see a brown out reset, an external reset, a watchdog timer reset, a new PDI reset, or a software reset, but never a power on reset. I gave you as the reason that during a power on of your Nano Every, First, the bootloader in the SAMD11 takes control and after everything is powered up, it will do its thing and then send a UPDI, so Universal Programming and Debugging Interface Reset command to your AT Mega 4809 after it has been powered up. So you really don't see the power up in your sketch. You only only see the UPDI reset. And that's simply not the case. Let's talk about what I have here on my breadboard. So the digital pins 18 to 21, these are the ones here in the front, and two, that's the one here in the back, are connected via 1.6K resistors to LEDs of different colors, and the LEDs are connected to the 5 volt rail. So to light up a LED, you need to pull your digital pin low. The physical sequence here is green D2, then green D18, green D19, yellow D20, and red D21. And now let's have a look at the sketch I'm using. So first I'm including here AVR-IO that defines all the Mega AVR registers and bits, details, see the last video already carded, link in the description. And then I have here five constant expressions, bytes to define my digital pins. I have here uh, the heartbeat pin, a power on reset pin, a UPDI reset pin, external reset pin and a brownout reset pin. Uh, we can ignore the brownout reset pin for in the context of this video. We will see that in another video. And these are, as we have seen, 2 and then 18 to 21 and 2 is the green on the very left and 21 is the red LED on the very right. In the setup, I first initialize my serial interface, so the USB port, we will see why in a second. Then I set all my pins as outputs and I write low to all my pins. Remember, pulling the digital pin low lights up the LED and then I wait a second. Just lighting up all LEDs for one second to see if everything is connected properly. Then I do a digital write of high to my heartbeat pin, turning the heartbeat LED off again. And for the other four pins, I'm using functions to set them. We will have a look at these functions in a second. So first, uh, the reset flag power on, not, remember I have to pull it low, to light up the LED, reset flag UPDI, reset flag external and reset flag brown out. And then I clear all reset flags. We saw that function here also in the previous video, so I won't show it here again. I think I renamed it a little bit. 
In the loop I have a static variable, so the value of that variable will survive every entry of the loop, a bool heartbeat, which is initially true, and every time I go into the loop, I set heartbeat to not heartbeat, and I do a digital write to the heartbeat LED pin with the current value. And I also print out on the serial port if heartbeat uh, is true heartbeat. And I delay here 250 milliseconds, so the LED will blink at 2 hertz, and every half second we get a heartbeat printout on the serial port. That's not really important, uh, that's just for demonstration purposes. And then I have here uh, six different functions to test the reset flags in the reset flag register of the Mega AVR. Uh, details again, already carded the previous video, link in the description. So I have uh, six functions here. The first one, reset flag UT. Do UPDI is just testing if the UPDI reset flag is set in the reset flag register and if that's the case then it returns true, otherwise false. And I have analog functions for the uh, reset flag software, watchdog, external, brownout and finally power on. Now what do you think will happen if I connect now my Nano Avery here to USB? I have already uploaded that sketch and if I turn the USB connector around that should actually work. Yeah, heartbeat, we have a heartbeat, that's nice. And we have a power on reset. We have a power on reset. Now, what happens if I upload that sketch again? We get another reset and this time it's not a power on reset, it's a UPDI reset from the bootloader via the, uh, on the SAMD11 via the universal programming and debugging interface. Okay. Uh, so we have two cases already here. Now let's pull the plug and connect again, just powering on. So obviously we have a reset, but it's a power on reset. So <laughs> the bootloader does not issue a reset from the SAMD to our AT Mega. However, however, we know now, go and switch on the serial monitor, we get another reset again. And yeah, we, we obviously have a, a heartbeat now, but we get a new T, <laughs> UPDI reset uh, if we initialize the serial monitor. And uh, you probably know that effect that if you disconnect here and uh, we just delete the content and you connect again, yeah, there is no, <clears throat> no output on the serial monitor. You have to reinitialize the serial monitor and then we have a UPDI reset again from the bootloader. Now the interesting thing is if I do a hardware reset, the yellow LED, yeah, we experience the hardware reset, but the bootloader does nothing. And of course our serial port stops also working until I restart the serial monitor and then we experience again a UPDI reset from the bootloader on the SAMD11. So after our power on, so supplying 5 volt via USB, we see just a power on reset. If we do an upload, we see an UPDI reset, which is of course initialized by the bootloader in the SAMD11. 
If we connect the serial monitor, not the plotter, we always see a UPDI reset. Yeah, after we do a hardware reset, we lose the connection to the serial monitor and we have to reconnect it. That is restart the serial monitor, not a plug in, plug out USB. For the serial plotter, things are a wee bit different. <laughs> so, if you first, yeah, establish the connection on your serial uh, to the serial plotter the first time, you get a UPDI reset from the bootloader on the SAMD. However, if you have in between a hardware reset or something, there is no reset at all. The connection is still there and uh, uh, the serial plotter simply receives new data and continues on. Let me show you that. I made just a slight change to my sketch here. Instead of printing out heartbeat, I'm now printing out the heartbeat boolean, so zero or one. Let me quickly upload that and then we have a look what's happening. So let's open the serial plotter and yeah, uh, you can already see it. We have here a UPDI reset and our heartbeat is on and here's our heartbeat on the serial plotter, uh, 010101. And if I do now a hardware reset, we go through a hardware reset, but not a UPDI reset. And our serial plotter just continues plotting. So yeah, um, blame that on uh, the Arduino team. Why the, <laughs> the implementation between the serial monitor and the serial plotter is different. Yeah. That's it for today. Yeah, a short video for a change. Okay, I had a few shorter videos in between, but not one that short. Anyway, uh, you might have noticed that this is a little overkill here and also the script uh, for just demonstrating <laughs> the, uh, when a UPDI reset occurs and when it doesn't. Uh, yeah, I'm in the process of making a video about brownout resets on the Arduino Nano Avery. Also very interesting and coming up. Uh, maybe not the video directly after this one, but oh, we'll see. Anyway, till next time. Bye.